Welcome to this mini project where you're going to get the experience of using X-Ray to perform some tracing within a simple serverless application. Now when I say serverless application, it's nothing complex. It's essentially a Lambda function which has been provided with a function URL, meaning you can call this function directly, and it makes use of the dog API to retrieve a doggo picture. But what's important about this mini project is the experience that you'll gain integrating X-Ray with this Lambda function to perform debugging of the Lambda function itself, as well as any associated products and services which it uses. Now, as always, you're going to need to make sure that you're logged in to an AWS account using an identity with admin permissions. If you're using any of my courses, then this can be the I am admin identity of the general AWS account, so the management account of the organization. If you're not using my courses, then I would recommend a dedicated training account, and within that account, use an identity with admin permissions. Now, as always, I recommend using the Northern Virginia region, which is US-East-1. This mini project may work in other regions, but this is the region which I've tested it in. Now, the first step of this mini project is we're going to create an S3 bucket, which will be used to store our dog images. So to do that, click in the search box at the top and type S3 and then open that in a brand new tab. Then go to that tab and click on Create Bucket. Now, just as a reminder, bucket names do need to be globally unique. Now, what we're going to call the bucket is cute hyphen doggos and then hyphen and then a random number at the end. And I'm going to use 1337. You should pick your own random number. The bucket needs to be in the US hyphen East hyphen one region or whichever region you're picking to do this mini project. Once you've set all of that, scroll down to the bottom and click Create Bucket. The next stage is that we need to create a role for the Lambda function. Execution roles for Lambda functions are what give the Lambda function the permissions to interact with other AWS services, and so we need to create one of those. So click in the search box at the top and type I am and open that in a new tab. Then move to that tab, click on roles, and then click create role. Now it's going to be a role for an AWS service, so make sure that's selected, and then down at the bottom, go ahead and pick Lambda, because it's going to be used by AWS Lambda, and then you can move on to the next step. Now for the permissions, we're going to use managed policies, and we're going to assign the Amazon S3 full access managed policy to this role. Now, if this were a project within a production environment, you would be a lot more granular. For this mini project, though, we can just choose this managed policy. So check the box next to Amazon S3 full access. Now, in addition to Amazon S3 full access, we're going to give this additional permissions. So go ahead and click on clear filters. And then in the filter box, type CloudWatch and press enter. And you're looking for CloudWatch full access. So check that box. And you should see at the top here, it should say selected two out of and then a number. And this number for you might be different, but the two should be the same because we've assigned the Amazon S3 full access and the CloudWatch full access. So scroll down to the bottom and move on to the next step. For role name, we're going to put dog hyphen photo hyphen function hyphen role. So enter that, scroll down and then create the role. The next stage is that we need to create the Lambda function itself. Click in the search box at the top and type Lambda, and then open that in a new tab. Then move to that tab, go to Functions, and then create the function. We're going to author the function from scratch, and it's going to be called dog-image-scraper. And for the runtime, click in the box and choose Python 3.9. The architecture needs to be x86-64, then expand change default execution role, select to use an existing role, click in the drop down, and select dog-photo-function-role, and then scroll down and click on create function. So that means the function will have the permissions to interact with S3 and CloudWatch, and that's what we need. Now, if you go ahead and open the text-based instructions for this mini-project, we're going to need to download the function zip file. So within the folder for this mini-project, there's a file function.zip, so click on that, 
and then click download to download that to your local machine. Then go back to the Lambda console and we're going to upload that zip file to provide the code for this function. So click on upload from and select zip file. Then click on upload and select function.zip and click save. Now if we go back to the text-based instructions and go to the Lambda X-Ray folder and just scroll down, this is the code for the Lambda function. So essentially what this does is call the dog API, so it sets the endpoint here and it uses the requests Python module to download a dog image. Now what we're doing in order to use X-Ray is we're wrapping the API request within an X-Ray segment called call dog API. And we're also doing the same for the S3 upload. We're wrapping that in a segment called save dog to S3. And the reason we're doing this is this is what allows X-Ray to perform debugging of our Lambda function. So X-Ray uses this to track all of the different calls to both AWS services and external services. And you'll see how that looks within the X-Ray console in a few moments. Now the reason we're uploading the Lambda function as a zip file is because Lambda only has a limited number of Python modules available. And if you need any more, including the AWS X-Ray SDK or the Request module or any additional Python modules which aren't included by default, then you need to create your own deployment zip file. Now because we're using a fairly large function along with all the associated modules, we're going to get this warning message within code source, so we won't be able to edit the code within the Lambda UI, but that's why we've uploaded this zip file. Now what we need to do is get the function URL for this Lambda function. So to do that, go ahead and click on configuration and then click on function URL. And we need to create a function URL. So click on create function URL. For auth type, we're going to select none. Now this does leave this open to the world. If this were production, you generally tighten this down and maybe use I am authentication. But for this mini project, having it open to the world is fine because it's not going to be running for that long. Now we need to scroll down to the bottom and click on save. Now note down this function URL because we're going to be using this in a few moments to call our function. Now next we need to select environment variables because we need to tell this Lambda function where our S3 bucket for our dog images is located. So we need to give this Lambda function the bucket name where to store these dog images. So click on edit. We're going to add an environment variable and the environment variable key or name is bucket underscore name in all caps. And for the value, you need to put the name of the bucket that you created. Now in my case, this is cute doggos 1337 Your bucket name will be different. Make sure you put your bucket name in the value box. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on save. Next, make sure configuration still selected. Go to monitoring and operations tools. Click on edit and then make sure AWS X-Ray is active. So toggle that box. Now this tells us the permissions for X-Ray could not be located, but it will attempt to add these on our behalf. Scroll down to the bottom, click on save. One last thing, still under configuration. Go to general configuration, click on edit and change the timeout from 0 minutes and 3 seconds to 0 minutes and 15 seconds. This just ensures our Lambda function has enough time to access the dog API as well as save the image to the S3 bucket. So once you've done that, go ahead and click on Save, and then go to Configuration, Function URL, and open this function URL in a new tab. And this is going to invoke our Lambda function, and what we'll see on the output is the output of this Lambda function. So go ahead and do that. And what you should see is a picture of a doggo. Now if we go back to our S3 console, and just do a refresh, that's going to have saved that image to the S3 bucket. And if you've clicked refresh multiple times, you might see multiple doggo images. So let's go ahead and open the most recent. So click on it. Click on open. You might get a pop-up notification. You'll have to allow that. There you go. You can see one doggo, but that's not the doggo that I loaded on my screen. So I need to go back. It's probably the other one. So I'll open the older doggo image. Click open. 
And there we go, that's the doggo image that's shown when we run the Lambda function. Now every time you refresh this Lambda function, you will get a new doggo image because it's making a call to the doggo API each and every time. And every time you call the function, if we go back to the bucket, you'll see a saved copy of that image. So that's how you can use a Lambda function with a function URL to directly invoke that function whenever you open that URL. And in this particular case, we've got it so that it makes a call to the dog API and then stores the resultant image in S3. Now what I want to do is show you how that flow looks within X-Ray. So click in the search box at the top and type X-Ray and then open that in a new tab. And then move to that tab. Now the console might look like this or you might get the new UI. I'm going to go ahead and explicitly click to try out the new console. Depending on when you're watching this mini project, you might get the new one by default and that's okay. If you click on the hamburger menu on the left, you need to go to service map under X-ray tracers and you should see this view. So I'm just going to zoom out to make it easier to see. And this shows a map or a flow of all of the different stages of this function, including any other elements which are called by the Lambda function. So in this particular case, we can see that a client makes a call to our Lambda function, so dog-image-scraper, and then that Lambda function runs a number of calls, so it makes a call to the dog API, and then stores a result within an S3 bucket. And if you click on any of these resources and then expand, you'll be able to see a list of metrics about that specific call. So the latency, the number of requests, any errors, and much more. Now if we go to the Tracers page, this is even more interesting. If we scroll down to the bottom, you'll be able to see individual tracers through our application. So tracers are user interactions all the way through from the point at which the Lambda function is called, all the way to the end of the function invocation. So if we go ahead and click on one of these tracers, we can scroll down and see a waterfall style diagram of all of the different elements of this Lambda function. We can see the call dog API element of this, and this shows exactly how long the function took to call the dog API and retrieve a result. Now what I want to demonstrate is what happens when we break this Lambda function. So if you go back to the Lambda function, make sure you're in the configuration tab, go to environment variables, Click on edit, and then change the name of the bucket to something that we don't control. For example, Jeff Bezos private bucket, and click on save. And then if we go back to the Lambda function URL and hit refresh, what you should see is an internal server error because we've just broken the Lambda function. But using X-Ray, we can see exactly what the fault is. So let's go back to X-Ray, click on the hamburger menu and go to tracers and then click on Run Query, and that's retrieved one extra trace, which is the most recent interaction with this Lambda function. So scroll down to the bottom. You should see your most recent Lambda function trace. Let's go ahead and click on that. Scroll down. Straight away we can see a difference in colour scheme, so this is brown. If we scroll down, we'll be able to see a detailed overview of any errors within the Lambda function. And we can even see the specific AWS API calls which have caused the error. In this case, put object jeff-bezos-private-bucket. And this is logical because this isn't a bucket that the Lambda function has access to, and so it will generate an error. Now if we just scroll to the top and click on the S3 bucket icon, that will isolate that particular element in this timeline window, and you can get a nice overview of exactly what the problem is. Now if we scroll down to the segments overview and click on S3, and then we'll get a more detailed view on the right, let's just expand that a little bit, and go to exceptions, then you'll see the exact error, which is an error occurred no such bucket when calling the put object operation, so the specified bucket does not exist. So you can see how useful X-Ray is in helping you debug applications. It works across AWS products and services, many come with built-in support, and it can also be used when you're using external API calls or other external components. Now exactly how to do this is beyond the scope of this mini project, but I will include some links attached to this video which go into more detail.
Now at this point all that remains is for us to tidy up the account and return it back into the state it was before this mini project. So the first thing is to go to the S3 console, go to buckets, select the bucket that you created for this mini project, go to empty, and then you'll need to confirm that empty process, wait for that to complete and click on exit, select that again, go to delete, Confirm that deletion, then go back to the Lambda console, go to Functions, select the Lambda function that you created, click on Actions and Delete, and then you'll need to confirm that deletion. Then go back to the IAM console, go to Roles, just type dog and press Enter, select the role that you created, and then delete it. You'll need to confirm that. Then go to the CloudWatch console, click on the hamburger menu, go to Log Groups, and you should have a log group which is called forward slash AWS forward slash Lambda and then dog hyphen image hyphen scraper. So select that, click on actions, delete log groups and then click on delete. And any of the x-ray data is automatically deleted after 30 days. We can't delete it before then so we don't need to do anything in the x-ray console. At this point though, that is the end of this mini project, you've cleared up the account and returned it to the same state as it was at the beginning. Now I hope this has been useful, but at this point that's everything that you need to do, so go ahead and complete this video, and I look forward to you joining me in another exciting mini project.